You got the email from Walter. <laughs> okay, folks, we'll call our meeting to order. Um, I will begin with our land acknowledgement. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are in Mi'kma'ki and the district of Sabag and Agate, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We will now have our moment of silent contemplation. Next, I would be looking for approval of or amendments to the agenda. Um, if I could, uh, there is one amendment I would ask someone to move, and that is to remove the ratification of the sale of the South Rodden Hall as everything didn't get finalized today in time to do that tonight. So if someone would move that amendment to the agenda, I would appreciate it. I'll move the amendment. Okay. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary, motion is carried. So looking for someone to move the uh, agenda as amended. So moved. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary, motion is carried. Next, we'll be looking for the approval of the minutes of January the 17th, 2023 regular meeting of council for policy and the January 25th, 2023 regular meeting of council. Moved. Moved by Councillor Green, seconded by Councillor Musa. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary, motion is carried. We'll now move along to correspondence for information. And you have, these have been posted, you have them before you. Is there any item that anyone wishes to draw attention to? Uh, Councillor Mitchell. Uh, thank you, Madam Warden. Just uh, looking at item 11, which was the HR annual report. I uh, was very pleased to see that there is a section there on uh, employee wellness, and I'm very happy that that's moving forward for their benefit. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other items for correspondence for information? Seeing none, we'll move to correspondence for decision. First item is around the 2023 FCM annual conference. And as always, we have budget for five delegates, uh, myself and the CAO and three others. And uh, just to make note, the Councillor Mitchell will also be attending as a director of FCM. So I would be looking for anyone who has interest in attending the FCM conference in Toronto this year. And it is from the 25th to the 28th of May. We have had an email from Councillor Tingley who has indicated that uh, should there, he has gone last year, so he would certainly give way to anyone who hadn't gone the previous year. But if there was, uh, was room, he would certainly attend again this year. Uh, Deputy Warden Perry. Yes, I, I'd just like to say, like, for, for, for those who have the ability to, uh, to attend, it is definitely uh, well worth uh, the trip, the networking you get to make and understand uh, issues that's going on in East Hance that are also affecting many municipalities across the country is, is very key. You, you'll also find out, as we did on, I've been fortunate to go last time as well, there were some issues that other areas had that we were running into and they had some unique um, solutions that they had tried and were and various degrees of success. So being able to learn 
from other from others that have gone through similar things and similar sizes and growing is invaluable. So I definitely recommend that anybody that is available go. Um, and if there is nobody else that wants to go, I would I would travel travel again. But I would like to hope that somebody else would take that uh, opportunity. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Deputy Warden. So looking around the room again, not seeing anyone who has the availability. So that would that would be the Deputy Warden and Councillor Kingley. There would still be room for one more. How quickly do we need to know, Shirley? The deadline, early deadline comes for April, but just looking at whether it's that yes. Yes, the study tours do get booked up quickly. Councillor McPhee. Oh, thank you, Warden. Yes, I would be interested in going, but I'd have to first make arrangements for Suki, my dog, to make sure there was, so I couldn't commit to going tonight, but I would be interested. Okay. It would take me a so, day or two to confirm that. Okay. So tentatively, we could say then that Councillors McPhee, Tingley, and the Deputy Warden, myself, and the CAO would be going. And if you could let Cheryl know as mm -hmm. soon as, as you can, that would be good. Okay, so I think it, do we need a motion at this time authorizing that? Someone prepared to make the motion? Oh, Councillor McPhee. Yes, I'll make the motion. I don't know just exactly what the wording needs to be. <laughs> Are there trouble with the buzzers or the, the lights? I'm just wondering. I saw Councillor Garden Cole seem to want to speak. Okay, no. Okay. I was Okay. So the motion would be authorizing the warden, myself, Councillor Tingley, McPhee, and the Deputy Warden Perry to attend FCM. Okay. And seconded by Councillor Garden Cole. Any discussion? Question. Question's been called. Two people who haven't voted. Some, no, one person who hasn't voted. No, aside. Councillor Oh, Councillor Eisner is absent. Okay. So we have um, Councillor Tingley has joined virtually, I believe. And bear with us, folks. This is our first adventure with a virtual attendee. So. And I guess, forgive me, how are we going to recognize Councillor Tingley's vote? Waiting for the vote. Okay, so we don't believe that Councillor Tingley had joined the motion of the meeting at that time, so the motion is passed unanimously. Okay, moving along. The next item is a temporary borrowing resolution. Who is for to you, Sue? Thank you, Madam Warden. Um, so this evening we're looking, staff is looking to um, request two temporary boring resolutions for refinancing for both of them. Um, this is required in order for us to borrow from Municipal Finance Corp and they will go to the province for approval. We're looking for refinancing for um, borrowing for regional and Shuby water towers for a five year period. 
and the amount is there on the screen, I think, 130730 And also to refinance for sidewalks um, for a 10-year period in the fall for 714000 And the motion is there. I can read it if you want me to. Thank you, Madam Warden. Through through you to staff, and these and these financial financial amounts would would, would go in the appropriate um, envelopes, and and payments be made from the ratepayers that pay into both of those. Correct. That is correct. They're in the budget already. It's just a matter of the formality of being um, getting getting the resolution tonight, going to the province for approval, and then going to MFC to allow us to borrow. That's ex that, that that's what I expected. I just want to make sure that it was clear. Because there's been lots of questions, a lot of areas about water and sidewalks. So I want to sure. let people know that this is already paid for by, by, by certain groups. So I will move the recommended motions. Move the council approve the temporary boiling resolution and the resolution for the for pre-approval for the regional and Shubenacne water towers refinancing the amount of $130,730 is attached to the council agenda report dated February 22nd, 2023. And move that council approve the temporary boiling resolution and the resolution for the pre-approval for the sidewalk refinancing in the amount of 714000 as attached to the council agenda report dated February 22nd, 2023, that the average interest rate of the debitures not exceed the rate of 6.5% and for terms not to exceed five years for the refinancing of the water towers and not exceed 10 years for the refinancing of the sidewalks. I so move. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Questions been called. Pardon? Okay. And Councillor Tingley has joined the meeting as is in favor, as well as everyone in the room. So the P motion has passed unanimously. Okay, so moving along, we have a public hearing, but it is not scheduled until the hour of 7.30. So we will be moving to item 10, looking for ratification of the DAR land purchase. And who will be stick handling this one? Adam? Over to you. Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Madam Warden. So in front of you tonight is your ratification of the uh, DAR, uh, former DAR line. Um, over the past numerous years, Council's been looking at the acquisition of this uh, piece of land throughout the municipality. And tonight in front of you is the ratification for the various uh, PIDs that are associated with it. The Property uh, transaction closed on January, actually February the 1st. Um, and so in front of you tonight, uh, we're moving that. And then there's an additional piece to the ratification, which uh, West Hans has also moved forward on there and with uh, acquiring the section of the line that is in uh, their municip uh, municipal property. One of the PIDs does overlap slightly within East Hans boundary. So we will be looking at moving forward with subdividing that. So East Hans in the long term, we'll own all of that uh, land in our municip that's within our municipality. So that is uh, the motion in front of you and subsequent reports will be brought forward along the way uh, with uh, this acquisition. Thank you. Someone prepared to move the motion? Deputy, oh, Deputy Ward. Oh. Okay. Moved by Councillor Green, seconded by Councillor Hebb. Is there any discussion on the motion? Councillor Rhino. Yes, I, I'm a little confused, but I, I, I was pretty sure that all these motions in council should be read in, should be read in the council, not just saying a move the above thing, but that's a, a, of the chair's discretion. But I would reluctantly support this because I can see 
in the bigger picture, I think it has potential for the area and potential for the hands nor the area as far as tourism. But I would be remiss not to say that it's not going, it's going to affect a few, a quite a few people. You're going to have vehicles, ATVs or whatever, driving through the middle of people's property with property on both sides, some is houses very, very close, perhaps sitting on top of almost of, of the line. And I know however this turns out and whoever takes the running of this, you know, will could govern themselves and most likely will govern themselves accordingly and, and, and be very good stewards. But you can't say that about everybody that, that's coming along and, and we will inevitably have problems. And I feel sorry for these people that is going to run by these houses who are going to be interrupted by these bikes. And also, if it's a multi-use trail, if that's the way it goes, I, I still have a problem with seeing how it's going to be multi-use with horses, pedestrians, and, and uh, motor vehicles. So, you know, I really hope this works. I really, really do because it has potential, but it, it is going to affect a lot of people in along my area, and they're going to be uh, very affected. And uh, I just hope that any problems that arise from this will be dealt with and handled because, you know, if it comes in my stead as councillor, I will be bringing them forth on the floor of this council. So, thank you. Thank you, councillor. I would just state that this simply ratifies the purchase of the property and that there have been no decisions made or anything as to what the development of this property will look like and i'm sure we'll have lots of reports and discussions going <coughs> forward and i certainly um for the interest of the public um i certainly don't object to reading the motion in its entirety and i would ask the mover if he would please read the motion into the record Move the council ratify the in-camera direction of the staff to acquire the former Dominion Atlantic Railway Capital Project 19-005 from Lambert Holdings Limited for $318,750 plus tax and legal fees to be funded from special reserves, sale of capital assets, C008, kids number 452251821822 Clarksville, 452 25190 Kennecook, 452 Kennecook, 452 Upper Kennecook, 452 Upper Kennecook, 452 Mile River, 452 Laddie's Brook, 452 South Maitland, 4522573 South Maitland, 4225281 South Maitland. And the council ratified the in camera direction to provide an easement in favor of Timberland Holdings Limited to access PID number 45387354 and PID number 45229796 over PID 45225182. And the council directs staff to enter into an agreement with West Hans Regional Municipality to set out the obligations for PID number 45225174 with the intent for West Hans Regional Municipality to subdivide and convey approximately 3.5 acres located within the municipal boundaries of East Hans to East Hans and the cost associated be allocated from Capital Project 19-005 to be funded from special reserves, sale of capital assets, C008. And I would just add that uh, in the event of any discrepancies between the reading of all these numbers and what is printed on the screen, the numbers as printed on the screen are, are correct. So that is the reading of the motion into the uh, record. Uh, Councillor Mitchell. Yes, I think in listening, the last South Maitland one was Four five two, and I didn't hear the four five. I heard the four two two. Now, that's why I said that the numbers so I just is want on to make the screen sure that... take precedence. Okay, over thank it. you. And I do apologize. I'm not sure I turned Councillor Green's mic on when he read the motion. And you 
Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? Question. The question has been called and we will go to the vote. Okay, and the motion has passed unanimously. Councillor Hale. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Just like to say that uh, this has been on the work now for probably eight or ten years, and I know staff has put an awful lot of time in this and, and a lot of effort to make this happen, and I just want to say thank you on behalf of the council here that we do appreciate the work that was put into this and, and the outcome that has come, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hebb. So we still have some time. So we will go to the ratif oh no, that's been stricken from the agenda. So we'll move to Deputy Warden Perry and we'll start the Corporate and Residential Services Report. Thank you, Madam Warden. The committee held this regular meeting on February 14th, 2023 online via Zoom, as well as budget meetings on January 24th and 31st, 2023. The following motions are coming forward as a result of those meetings. The Community Partnership Fund 2023-2024. At the January 24th, 2023 budget meeting, staff brought forward the annual review report of the Canadian Partnership Fund Program for 2023-2024. The Parks, Recreation and Culture Committee recommends to Council to approve the list of recommended Community Partnership Fund organizations to be included in the draft 2023-2024 budget and grants to be dispersed to the following final budget First to, to, to the following, final budget approval. Gordor Community Option for Adults, 15000 East Hans Community Rider, 50000 East Hans Family Resource Center, 20000 East Hans Historical so Society, 16158 East Hans Sports Heritage Society, 5000 East Hans Youth Links, 6000 Senior Safety Program Association of Hans County, 10000 Kids in Action Annapolis Valley Hans Community Action Program, 10,000. As chair of the committee, I so move. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Question's been called. We'll go to the vote. And the motion is passed unanimously. Back to you, Deputy Warden. General Government Grants 2023-2024. The January 24th, 2023 budget meeting, staff brought forward the report regarding the overview of funding and the organizations currently included in the General Government Grants Program. The Parks, Recreation, and Culture Committee recommended Council that pending appropriate documentation received and the passing of the 2023-2024 budget, Council approved the following general government grants for disbursement in 2023-2024. Remembering Canada's Heroes, 1,000. Hance County Exhibition, 500. East Hance Crime Prevention, pending insurance grant for zero. Dr. Snow Bursaries, 3,000. East Hance Food Banks slash Christmas Programs, Karen and Sharing, Hance North Food Bank, Shumalak, Indian Brook Food Bank, Uniac Wish Givers, Kids in Action, Angel Tree Program, Hans County Christmas Angels, 7,000. Coates Association, 2,000. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? The question's been called. We'll go to the vote. And the motion is passed unanimously. D, transfer tax revenue. The Corporate Residential Services Committee also recommends to Council that Council direct staff at a time staff have an opportunity before the next budget to bring forward a report to begin discussions of how D transfer tax should be allocated. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? 
The question's been called. We'll go to the vote. And the motion is passed unanimously. Capital Budget 2023-2024 to 2027-2028. The Corporate and Residential Services Committee recommends to Council that the five-year capital budget for the fiscal year 2023-2024 to 2027-2028 as presented be approved and adopted effective April 1st, 2023. Administration is given approval to proceed with the previously approved capital projects and those in the approval sought sections subject to any conditions limiting such projects in previous motions of Council or in policies of Council. Should time permit, staff are also authorized to embark on projects in this capital budget that require long-term pre-planning prior to April 1st, 2023. Project approved for further study are approved in principle only. Amounts identified as approved for further study cannot be expended prior to a presentation of a full report to Council for all consideration or approval through a future capital budget process. Where time permits, staff are given approval to proceed with approval sought projects from 2023-2024 prior to April 1st, 2023. And that any projects approved in the 2022-2023 capital budget not reflected as carry forward to the 2023-2024 capital budget, but that are substantially committed at March 31st, 2023, shall be carried forward to the 2023-2024 based on the remaining budget as of March 31st, 2023 and that this five-year estimate of capital spending from the capital investment plan as required by the federal and provincial gov government funding agreements, and that the water sections of this budget are permitted to stand alone as the East Hans Water Utility Capital Budget as required by the Nova Scotia Utility and Review Board, and that staff be given the authority to alter the sources of funding wherever necessary, but in no case shall the amounts be debitured increase without prior approval of council and that Council seek ministerial approval for a temporary borrowing resolution for any amounts in this capital budget under the debiture debt category for funding, and that pre-approval to borrowing limits in this capital budget under the debt debiture category funding for a term not to exceed 25 years at a rate not to exceed 6.5%. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion on the motion? Questions been called. We'll go to the vote. And the votes are in. Um, Councillor Tingley has been voting along. So it is nine in favor, one against. The motion has passed with uh, Councillor Rhino voting nay. We've now reached the hour of 7.29. We do have a public hearing scheduled for 7.30. I do not believe that uh, we probably have time to proceed any further with this report before the public hearing starts. So we'll give staff time to get set up and ready for the two public hearings that are on the docket tonight. I'm just waiting for the clock to turn to 7.30. We've reached the hour of 7.30, which is the appointed hour. <laughs> Councillors, this evening we have two items on the public hearing agenda. The purpose of this hearing is for Council to hear input from the public prior to making a decision on the proposals. To the members of the public who have chosen to participate this evening, welcome. Please note that Council's procedural policy requires that you not cheer, boo, clap, or otherwise disrupt the hearings. Anyone who wants to comment or ask questions will be provided an opportunity to do so. 
Tonight, Council may approve, reject, or defer its decision on the proposals to a later date. Council approval is required for the proposals to proceed. I will now ask the Municipal Clerk to outline when the public hearing advertisements were published. Madam Warden, the public hearing notice appeared in the February 8th and 15th editions of the Chronicle Herald. The notices described the proposal, gave the date and time of the public hearing, and indicated the staff reports were available to the public. Thank you. Councillors, the first public hearing this evening is for a proposal to redesignate and rezone a property on the East Uniac Road to enable a low density residential subdivision. I would now ask the chair of the Planning Advisory Committee to present his report. To you, Councillor Mitchell. Planning Advisory Committee has considered the proposal on behalf of Municipal Council. The committee has reviewed staff reports, completed their evaluation, and will make a recommendation to Council during this hearing. Madam Warden, through you, I would now ask staff to present their final report on the proposal. Uh, thank you, Madam Warden. Uh, so the first application is to redesignate and rezone a property on the East Uniac Road. Uh, so the subject property uh, is located on the East Uniac Road. Uh, the portion of property to be redesignated, rezoned, uh, is approximately 22.2 hectares in size. Uh, and it is uh, zoned rural use with a watercourse green belt zoning along the rear of the property. Uh, and it is designated as rural use as well. Uh, so the applicants requested to change the designation from the rural use uh, designation to the established residential neighborhood designation and the zone from the rural use zone to the established residential neighborhood R1 zone in order to enable the development of a low density residential subdivision. And the concept plan contains uh, 26 potential new lots, uh, 35 lots in total. And the detailed layout, including the open space, would be submitted with a subdivision application. Uh, so this is the uh, proposed concept plan that has been submitted. Uh, again, it's just a concept and it would be uh, reviewed upon a subdivision application. Uh, so the Mount Uniac Growth Management Area is unique in that it enables development based on on-site sewage and water service. And the rural use zone doesn't allow for any new roads. Uh, therefore, the property has to be redesignated and rezoned uh, in order to enable the development. Uh, so staff have referred to our MPS policies associated with the Mount Uniac Growth Management Area, as well as the general policies related to amending the MPS and the land use bylaw. And council's decision this evening uh, is not appealable to the utility and review board. Uh, so the UNIAC District Volunteer Fire Department did comment and they have no concerns regarding the development in terms of providing fire service. Uh, Nova Scotia Public Works commented and they have no traffic impact concerns with the proposed additional residential lots um, off of East Uniac Road. Uh, the Sackville Rivers Association did provide some comments um, stating items they would like to see uh, addressed regarding the proposed development, uh, including uh, protection of the river, retaining uh, the watercourse greenbelt zone, providing public access to the river, uh, sedimentation, erosion control during construction. Uh, our infrastructure and operations uh, department provided comments stating all proposed roads will have to be designed in accordance with our municipal, stand uh, municipal standards and that a stormwater management plan would be required. <coughs> Uh, so Strum Consulting was engaged to do a level one groundwater study for the proposed development. Uh, so the study did recommend a level two be undertaken. However, the study also suggested that the drilled wells are expected to be satisfactory to provide an adequate yield of water of acceptable quality for the development. Uh, the study had also been provided for council to review. And our Parks and Recreation Department uh, commented uh, in relation to open space contribution and value of um, the lots. Uh, details regarding the open space contribution uh, would be determined at the subdivision stage. 
Uh, so for citizen engagement, so there was an advertisement uh, in the Chronicle Herald in July of 2022, uh, just indicating that the proposal was under review by staff. And we did hold a public information meeting uh, as part of the review process. So a letter was mailed to all property owners within 300 meters of the site, indicating the date and time of the meeting, as well as an ad placed in the Chronicle Herald. Uh, so the uh, public information meeting was held on September 6th in Mount Uniac. So there was 26 people in attendance, including three councillors. Some of the following comments that were noted were concerns regarding the state of the East Uniac Road and who is responsible for repairs and maintenance to the road. Concerns regarding the speed of traffic on the East Uniac Road. Uh, questions about uh, whether the watercourse greenbelt zone would be retained. Uh, residents would wanted to see a traffic impact study conducted, as well as some comments made from the Sackville, Res Sackville Rivers Association. And following first reading, um, a questionnaire was mailed to all property owners again within 300 meters. So we sent out 57 questionnaires and eight were returned. Um, the, some of the comments were again regarding the state of East Uniac Road in terms of speed of traffic. Um, and lack of maintenance. After correspondence with Public Works, they are not requiring a traffic impact study be conducted uh, for this portion of the road. Some other concerns were regarding wildlife, uh, concerns for potential flooding, water supply, uh, as well as the use of hockey stick lots in the concept plan. And a notice of tonight's hearing, again, was mailed to all property owners within 300 meters. Uh, so lastly, uh, staff have reviewed uh, the proposal to change its subject property to the established residential neighborhood designation and uh, the R1 zone. And the proposed amendments were evaluated using all applicable policies uh, in the planning strategy. And you can see in, in the timeline here, we are at the public hearing stage and uh, council can either approve or refuse the application. Uh, thank you, Madam Warner. Thank you. Does any member of council have questions for staff at this time? Seeing none, I would now ask if the applicant has any comments or would like to make a presentation. Thank you. I will now open the floor for comments and questions. If you are viewing the YouTube live stream, you may use the YouTube chat feature, which is being monitored. But first, does anyone attending in person have any comments or questions? Seeing none, does any member of the public have any questions or comments through the live chat on YouTube live stream? So we have no one on YouTube wishing to comment. Does any member of staff have any final comments? No? I would now ask the chair of the Planning Advisory Committee to present his committee's recommendation. Back to you, Councillor Mitchell. Planning Advisory Committee recommends that council give second reading to a proposal for a portion of PID 4514-3237 to change the designation from rural use RU to establish residential neighborhood ER and the zone from rural use RU to establish residential R1. As chair of PAC, I so move. We have a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Musa. Are there any final questions or comments from the municipal councillors? Oh, Councillor Musa. Uh, thank you, Madam Warden. So, so the road through that development is going to be municipal road, paved. Uh, this is Madam Warden. Yes. It's going to be paved. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, <coughs> th this proposal is at the beginning of East Uniac, and I'm not, I don't see any traffic concern because they're not going to go all the way down way back East Uniac like I think it's it's a good proposal and the fire department is going to get 
a lot of money from it every year and uh, the recreation is going to be having more money too so I'm on for it. Thank you. Do any other counselors have any comments or questions? The question has been called. And the motion has passed unanimously. So this brings us to the second public hearing for the evening. Uh, the second public hearing this evening is for a proposal to redesignate and rezone a property on the East Uniac Road to enable a low density residential subdivision. I would now ask a chair of the Planning Advisory Committee to present his report. Mr. Mitchell. Planning, Planning Advisory Committee has considered the proposal on behalf of Municipal Council. The committee has received staff reports, completed their evaluation, and will make a recommendation to council during this hearing. Madam Warden, through you, I would now ask staff to present their final report on the proposal. Thank you, Madam Warden. Uh, so this is uh, another redesignation and rezoning for the East Uniac Road. Uh, so the current property is zoned and designated as rural use, and it totals approximately 42.2 hectares in size. Uh, so the applicants requested to change the designation from the rural use uh, zone and designation to the country residential zone and designation in order to enable the development of a low density residential subdivision. Uh, and the concept plan shown uh, contains 54 potential new lots. Detailed layout including open space would be submitted with the subdivision application. And again, this is a concept plan only, so uh, staff may request amendments to the site layout after it's been reviewed. Uh, so this is the proposed potential concept plan for the development. Uh, so the rural use zone does not allow for any new roads. Therefore, the property has to be redesignated and rezoned in order to enable the development. Uh, so staff have referred to our policies associated with the country residential designation, as well as our general policies uh, related to amending our MPS and the LUB. And council's decision this evening is not appealable to the Utility and Review Board. Uh, so the UNIAC District Volunteer Fire Department commented and they have no concerns uh, regarding pro uh, providing fire service to the area. And Nova Scotia Public Works uh, stated they have no traffic impact concerns with the proposed additional lots accessing East UNIAC Road. Uh, they did comment if there's future development on the adjacent property that it would require evaluation of traffic impacts for both properties. Uh, our infrastructure and operations provided comments regarding the road layout and all roads will be designed in accordance with municipal standards. Uh, this would be done at time of subdivision application. Our parks and recreation comment on the proposal in relation to open space contribution and value of lots. Again, this would be uh, conducted further at the subdivision stage. And Strum Consulting uh, conducted a level one groundwater study for the proposed development. Uh, the study did uh, say a level two would be recommended. However, it also suggested that the drilled wells would be uh, expected to be satisfactory to provide an adequate yield of water of acceptable quality for the development. The study again was provided for council to review. Uh, for citizen engagement, so there was an advertisement in the Chronicle Herald in June of 2022 indicating that it was under review by staff. And as part of the review process, a public information meeting was required. So we mailed letters to all property owners within 800 meters of the site indicating the date and time of that meeting. And a notice was also placed in the Chronicle Herald. Uh, so the uh, public information meeting was held uh, in September at, in Mount Uniac with 26 people in attendance, including three councillors. Uh, some of the comments, uh, residents wanted to see a copy of the hydrogeological study uh, which has been provided on our, our website. Uh, discussion surrounding minimum lot sizes and a discussion on the meaning of low density housing. Uh, comments on the pressure on East Uniac Road and residents wanted to see a traffic impact study undertaken for the East Uniac Road. 
Uh, following first reading uh, questionnaire was again mailed to all property owners within 800 meters. So 130 questionnaires were sent out and nine were returned. Uh, some of the comments uh, again were regarding the state of East Uniac Road in terms of maintenance, lack of street lights, the speed of traffic, uh, question on how it will impact taxes, questions regarding water capacity and quality. And notice of tonight's meeting uh, was mailed to all property owners again within that 800 meters. Uh, so lastly, staff have reviewed the proposal to change the subject property to the country residential designation and zone. And the proposed amendments uh, were evaluated using all our applicable policies and our planning strategy. And again, in terms of the timeline, we are at uh, the public hearing stage. So council can either approve, refuse uh, the application. Thank you, Madam Warden. Thank you. Does any member of council have questions for staff? Seeing none. Oh, Councillor Musa. Is a question just for staff or for the applicant too? No, this is a question I believe for staff at this time. So seeing none, I would ask if the applicant has any comments or would like to make a presentation. I'm not sure. I guess I would ask the applicant if he would be willing to answer a question if councillors had a question. So, Councillor Musa, I'll give you some leeway. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, any any of those roads going to be paved? The road to the development, the main road, is that going to be a gravel road or just or paved? Paved road. Okay. Uh, I know I lived across the street from that subdivision for a while, and it was a nightmare to come in and out my house. So um, uh, I asked you this question in a public information meeting. Is there any way that where the road that exit that development, like on both sides, is there any way that you could take like some vegetation out and put some like some rocks and gravel, make sure it doesn't come back. This way, it will be easy for people to see in and out of the subdivision. Is that something you would entertain too? Like, I'm like I sorry. know Sorry, would you mind coming to the mic so that we can hear your answer, please? I would be happy to meet with you if you'd like, and we can. It's, 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 not, it's not that we have to meet. Like, uh, I can explain it probably. I, I know there's a lot of trees close to the road, and, and the, there's a sharp turn over there. So if you have 60, uh, 54 homes, uh, I think it's, it's our responsibility and your responsibility to make sure that it's safe for them to come out and into the development. So, so where the road come out, on each side, like make a buffer where there are no trees, like for just visibility, mm -hmm. so they can see furthermore. Yeah. If that if that's something, yeah, that's a reasonable could. request. Yeah. Okay. At thank all, you. Councillor Musa. Yes, You're thank welcome. you. Thank you to the applicant. Does any other councillor have any questions for staff? Okay. Yes, I already asked that. Uh, moving along, the applicant did not wish to make a presentation. I would now open the floor for comments and questions. If you are viewing the YouTube live stream, you may use the YouTube chat feature, which is being monitored. But first, does anyone attending in person have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I would uh, ask if any member of the public has any questions or comments through the live chat on the YouTube live stream. 
And I'm told by staff that there's no one in the queue for questions through the live stream. Does any member of staff have any final comments? No? no. I would now ask the chair of the Planning Advisory Committee to present his committee's recommendation. Councillor Mitchell. Planning Advisory Committee recommends that council give second reading and approve the proposal for PID 4515-7054 to change the designation and zone from rural use, RU, to country residential CR. As chair of PAC, I so move. We have a seconder. Seconded by the deputy warden. Are there any final questions or comments from municipal councillors? Question. Seeing none, the question has been called. And the motion has passed unanimously. So this concludes tonight's public hearings, and I would like to thank everyone who took the time for attending for coming out. Thank you very much. Returning to our agenda, we will return to the Corporate and Residential Services Report. Back to you, Deputy Warden Perry. Thank you, Madam Warden. Operating Budget 2022-2023, the Corporate Residential Service Committee recommends to Council the Council approve the draft Operating Budget 2022-2020, or sorry, 2023-2024, amend as follows. General Tax Rate Budget Adjustments, Proposed Budget Adjustments, Reserve, PRC, LEMC Facility, Condition Assessment, 34000 Additional recoverable revenue, LMC, 54998 Additional rent, LMC and library, 34010 Revenue reduction for tourism, 3000 Janitorial library, RCMP office increase, 5706 NSM fee increase, 5300 Reserves revised, 9046 Proposed $0.03 cent commercial rate decrease, 50029 <clears throat> General tax rate budget adjustments continued. Bylaw enforcement officer time, 50,967. Return on investments, interest rates increased January 25th, 2023 by 30,000. Interest on outstanding taxes, interest rate increased from 10% to 14% for 21,000. D transfer tax revenue, 225,000. Proposed one cent residential slash resource rate decrease raises 223,355, reserves revised 1,677, and that the following tax rates be set by council for the 2023-2024 fiscal year. General tax rate residential, 29.17 cents. General tax rate resource, 0.2917. General tax rate commercial, $2.5. 0.17 cents. General tax rate, mandatory provincial funding, 28.99 cents. General tax rate, RCMP service, 22.84 cents. Waste management fee per dwelling unit, 220. Commercial service levy rate, R2, 65.70 cents. Commercial service levy rate, Milford M2, $1.20. Residential service rate R1, 650 cents. Residential service rate Shubenacadie, SR1, 1850 cents. Residential service levy rate Milford, 34 and a half cents. Urban sidewalks and streetlight rate, 4 cents. Urban sidewalk rate, 2 cents. Urban sidewalk rate, 2 cents. Mount Uniac streetlight park subdivision rate of 2 cents. Mount Uniac Safety Streetlight Rate, 0.38 of a cent. Rodden Streetlight Rate, 4.3 cents. Shubenaki Differential on Urban Service Rate, 12 cents. Milford Differential on Urban Service Rate, 12.5 cents. 
Enfield Horn Settlement Streetlight Rate, 1.6 cents. <clears throat> Nine Mile Red River Streetlight Rate, 2 cents. Sportsplex Area Rate, Commercial Residential, Rhines Creek to Enfield, Nine Mile River and Bell Nan, 4 cents. Mount Uniac Recreation Rate, 0.7 of a cent. Enfield Fire Department Levy, 14 cents. Elmsdale Fire Department Levy, 14 cents. Lance Fire Department Levy, 14 cents. Milford Fire Department Levy, 17 cents. Shubenacadie Fire Department Levy, 17 cents. Maitland Fire Department Levy, 22 cents. Knoll Fire Department Levy, 22 cents. Walton Fire Department Levy, 22 cents. Gore Fire Department Levy, 22 cents. Kennecook Fire Department Levy, 22 cents. Nine Mile River Fire Department Levy, 17 cents. Rodden Fire Department, 23 cents. Mount Uniac Fire Department, 13.4 cents. Brooklyn Fire Department, 22 cents. Wastewater management fee rate per one gallons of water, full recovery of $10. Waste management fee rate cubic meter, full recovery, $2.20. And that the mandatory provincial funding rate will summarize all costs of public housing, education, and regional library and corrections. And that the RCMP service rate will include transfers to the Provincial Just Department of Justice for all amounts related to peace protection and related services. And that both the mandatory provincial funding rate and the RCMP services rate will be charged on all taxable assessment, including commercial, residential, and resource assessments. And that the provincial reporting per and that for provincial reporting purposes, the general residential resource tax rate will be eighty-one cents, and the commercial tax rate will be two dollars and fifty-seven cents. Chair of the committee, I so move. Second. Seconded by Councillor Green. Is there any discussion on the motion? Councillor Rhino. I cannot support this budget. Um, even with the rate set the way it is, $100,000 of uh, home uh, between last year and this year will be paying $22 more. $150,000 home will be paying $28 more. And the $200,000 will be paying $45 more. This does not seem like a big absorbent amount of money, but it is for the people who are out there struggling today. I think we could have done better. We have placed a lot of risk in our projection of the deed transfer tax. And if that doesn't come, you know, we'll have to pull some more from reserve. Uh, I am not convinced of all the ask by uh, staff on the uh, uh, replacements and new hires. I'm still not convinced that can happen. If we had have left them out, we probably could have made this uh, that much better at no increase at all on the, uh, on the rate. And really, when I look at this, it, this, uh, this budget passed in, in really three meetings, similar to the speed of light. So I cannot support this whatsoever. Thank you. Any further comments from councillors? Question. Question has been called. And the motion is passed by a vote of 10 to 1 with Councillor Rhino voting nay. <clears throat> Back to you, Deputy Warden. Thank you, Madam Warden. The water utility budget. The manager of finance gave a verbal report on the East Hans water utility finance estimates. The Corporate Residential Services Committee recommends to Council. Council approve the East Hans water utility budget financial estimates for 2023, 2024, to 2025, 2026 as presented. As chair of the committee, I so move. Seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Questions been called. And the motion has passed by a vote of eight to two with Councillor Rhino and Councillor Garden Cole voting nay. Back to you, Deputy Warden. Polling District Review. The Director of Planning and Development presented the sixth report on the Polling District Review 
that discussed phase two public consultation and provided a judicial scan of other municipalities regarding voter parity. The Corporate Residential Services recommended council, council authorized staff to prepare a submission to the Nova Scotia Utility and Review Board requesting the size of council be set at 11 and that the district boundaries follow the preferred option Foxtrot Bravo. As chair of the committee, I so move. We have a seconder. Seconded, Seconded by Councillor Head. Councillor Rhino. Again, I cannot support this motion. <clears throat> if this trend continues with uh, the uh, average voter, what we need going up, Hans North area, we're in another eight years, I might predict we'll, re we'll be down to one. You know, we, in the uh, workshops that we had, I reluctantly supported it, but once I saw the variances of other municipalities were putting forth, I said to myself, and I heard from the people of the Hans North area, how, what the, how they feel about losing more, another representation. That I think that, you know, our, our averages in the rural area are, are staying the same and is being skewed now by the fact that we're growing in another area that's putting ours at risk. Ours is staying the same, so why not should they, the representation stay the same? I firmly believe that if this if the growth in one area is great, which it is, then they deserve another counselor. Last eight years ago, they cut it from 13 to 11 based on the numbers of average per counselor and the residents. With that basis in mind, knowing the growth in, in the area of the corridor area and, and especially in the Lance area, to me, that's a dictation that we can support another counselor and, and could possibly be taken if explained in that situation. I will stand here till I die and I will support the people of the Hans North area to have the proper res representation. That's all I have to say. Thank you, counselor. Does any other counselor have any comments? I would ask the deputy warden to take the chair, please. Go ahead, Morton. I certainly share the concerns with the uh, reduction in the number of counselors in our rural Hans North area. Once again, we are hemmed in by the requirements that are imposed by the provincial government. Um, I continue to believe that uh, we should be advocating uh, very much for a review of this plus or minus 10% for many of the reasons that Councillor Rhino has, uh, has indicated. However, having, been, having reviewed what other municipalities have submitted, the overages and underages are not as great as would be if we kept the status quo. And in the few cases that they are, they are specific special communities of interest. Um, it is difficult. Um, I have been very disappointed every time we've lost a counselor in the rural area. However, having said that, unfortunately, I'm a numbers person and the numbers are the numbers. And we did look at a 12 district scenario, which just it didn't work for most of the corridor areas because it split too many communities. It certainly didn't work for my district. So we looked at it and at the end of the day, we came to the conclusion that the option that's in front of us here tonight was the most palatable option of, uh, of a difficult situation. So. I certainly am going to continue forward reluctantly and, and support this as I feel that uh, we did the best that we could do with the best chance of having success with the URB. I continue to, I continue to perhaps fear is too strong a word, but I would not want to go asking for an extra counselor because 
I would be afraid that we would be told no. And not only would we be told no, we could be told the same as last time, to reduce another one or another two. Because for the past number of boundary reviews, it certainly seems that there is some kind of a, a preference for smaller sized counselors. But I would certainly be very supportive of engaging with the provincial government about the plus or minus 10% and how reasonable it is, particularly in rural areas of, the, of, of this province. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Thank you, Madam Warden. And there's a few others up to speak. Go ahead, chair is yours. Councillor Musa. Uh, thank you, Madam Warden. I, I totally agree with Councillor Rhino. And if this passed now, that means that's it. We're, we're not doing anything. That so, would be up to the utility and review board. Yeah, but on, on our, this our end, this is what we would present to the URB. Uh, Honestly, I like to see us take another kick at it, see if we can do something better. Uh, I saw a lot of variance in the, in the other municipalities, and I, if, if sometimes work, why don't, why don't we try it? So I'm, I'm not going to support this one right now. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Garden Cole. Thank you, Madam Warden. Um, so I last we, we discussed this last week, and I still feel the same way as I did. I know we went over this a lot, and we came up with that um, with with what we felt was the best of a bad uh, scenario. But I just can't help but feel that once I saw those numbers of surrounding um, municipalities that I just felt like, like Councillor Musa just said, I just wish that we had been able to go at it again and, and maybe we would have come up with something successful. Maybe not, I don't know. I really hate that they put us in this position of, uh, of, of trying to make something good out of, out of something that it's really, hard, it's really hard to make something good out of this. Um, but I just, uh, I just feel like with those uh, other numbers that we saw, I just don't feel confident in, in going forward with this at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Deputy Warden Carey. Thank you, Madam Warden. Um, nobody likes change. Nobody likes to see uh, lost representation in, in any area. Um, one of the things that <clears throat> the pure numbers didn't show but was explained and some of the other things is some of those numbers were skewed by communities of interest that had a cultural and, and historical uh, aspect to it. And that's why in most of the instances that we see those numbers, those numbers were grossly over and accepted. Uh, on, we don't have um, the base for that at this time. And I mean, it's, it's five, we've, we've gone through 10 to t over 10 different scenarios, 12 different scenarios to get to where we got to. I think we did do due, due diligence and it's one of those things Nobody is happy with this, but I don't, after going through all of the different aspects where we tried to keep things the same and it was proven over and over again that that doesn't work, uh, that any further activity would just be, you know, we'd, be, we'd, we'd probably arrive back to the same situation. So I will support this motion. Thank you. Councillor Musa. Uh, thank you, Madam Warden. I have to disagree with you, Deputy Warden. When we when we did all the scenarios, we were under the impression that the 10% is a no, no, no. So I think we should be able to go at it one more time with the impression that we can have 59% in one district. If like other municipalities, I, I can't see why not. But when we when we did all those scenarios, we were under the impression that we cannot go over or under the 10%. Thank you. And that is the guidance provided by the Utility and Review Board. Exactly, but but I see other other municipalities, they're not abiding by it, so. And there has been no we rulings be able, on those. We should be able to have a scenario that we have like other municipalities that have 59% for a community of interest. Why not? I think we should try. If we, if we don't try, we have a backup. We have this one backup, but 
we should come up with something that keep the representation the same <coughs> and and probably with within the 20% instead of a 10% that we work on in the, in the whole scenarios. Thank you. CAO has asked to comment. Matthew, Madam Warden, just going back to the report and the jurisdictional scan. Um, so just a point to, to remind councillors that none of those, um, except maybe one or two, were have been approved by the board. So people are asking for them. The majority of those variations are sort of <coughs> minus 12%, minus 13%, plus 13%. There's one 23.9% in Halifax and a 20.89% in Queens, um, which was realigning the former town of Liverpool, but again, not approved yet. Um, there is one, the 57% uh, variation was for an African Nova Scotian community um, in Guysboro. So um, I think it's important, you know, when you look at what ours would be, they're plus 32%, plus 55%, minus 19 and minus 27. Those are sort of those larger variances. Um, and to, to mention that we also have an April 30th deadline to meet uh, with respect to submitting these, the final um, request of council. So I just wanted to, to make sure we were all on the same page. I know it's been a week since we um, met at committee. Uh, but the variations certainly that we're looking at um, in neighboring municipalities um, don't match anywhere close to where we would be uh, if we looked at sort of status quo. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McPhee. Uh, thank you, Warden. Yes, uh, like most of the other councillors spoken, I don't like this scenario, but it seemed to be the best one we could come up with. Uh, as the Warden pointed out, it's a, you're kind of throwing the dice to see if we go for an alternative to this. If we went for a 12th counselor, would we get knocked back to 10 or would they accept this one as a backup as Councillor Musa said? Who knows? Uh, if we want to go to a 12th counselor to solve this problem, the scenarios we came up with didn't work for the reasons stated. So maybe we have to take another approach where we uh, basically keep the districts that are now proposed for everything other than the Hans North area, try to make an argument for a third councillor for that area, but we're taking a chance of what the UARB may come back with us. If we are going to go that route, then councillors have to get together, work something out themselves, I think, come up with the arguments of why. Basically, the Hans North area is a special community, the same as these uh, other variances <clears throat> in the uh, other municipalities are basically put out there, you know, same as we have in uh, Sebag and Equity. We can't, you know, we have a special uh, area there that can't be split up. So we'd have to make a similar type of argument for Hans North. If we're willing to go ahead with that, then I wouldn't support this motion tonight, but some councillors are going to have to make a commitment that they're going to work at coming up with a, an alternative to this. We haven't been successful so far, but maybe if we take a, a different approach to it, we can. Thank you. I would just make the comment that uh, with Sebag and Agadee, that is based on previous direction from the board that we're not allowed to split that community because of the cultural significance of the community. Um, I, I would, uh, I, I don't see any way to turn the numbers that are there into something better. Uh, we had numerous presentations and workshops and uh, I, I don't see hundreds of people moving to the rural area in time to fix this. I, I simply don't. And I do not see, based on my experience of the Utility and Review Board, allowing us such large overages simply because we don't like what the numbers are and that's what the URB will, will see. And at one time, the Utility and Review Board put a little more credence on community of interest and geography. That has not been the case the last number of reviews. They are much more focused on voter parity and voter representation for districts. So 
th those are my comments. Um, back to you, Councillor Musa. Well, my argument about that area, I would say that the province and the federal have left this area without cell phones, without internet, without any sign of life there. So how do they expect people to move there? So now they have everything down there and we should give them a chance. Just give them a chance to grow up. I think we have a big, we have a good argument there. Now they have internet, they could attract people. Before you couldn't even force anybody, you couldn't even give anybody a home to live there. Because first they want, they want their cell phone, they want their internet. Now everything's changing and let's hope for a change. I think that's a good argument. Thank you. Any further comments? Question. Questions been called. Okay, so the vote is in. It is passed by a vote of eight to three with councillors Musa, Rhino, and Garden Cole voting nay. Okay, back to you, Deputy Warden. Thank you, Warden. Well and Septic Report. The, the policy analyst presented a report on a well and septic loan program based on the October 2022 direction to staff to pursue more information on a possible loan program for well and septic systems similar to the PACE program. The Corporate and Residential Service recommends to Council that Council authorize staff to bring back a further report on the Well and Septic Program, focusing on other fun funding alternatives and include middle earners. As Chair of the Committee, I so move. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Head. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question, Question has been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. Code of Conduct. The CAO gave a verbal report on the proposed Provincial Code of Conduct. Councillors had their questions answered by staff. No motions coming from that. Number 10, schubert Ackety Community Hall Update. The Corporate Residential Services Committee recommends to Council that Council deem the subdivided schubert Ackety Community Hall PID 45427218 surplus to municipal needs and that council authorized staff to call for expressions of interest from community nonprofit groups to purchase the subdivided Shubanaki Community Hall PID 45427218 on an as is where is basis with submissions to be brought to council for consideration and direction direction as chair of the committee I so move been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yes. Question has been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. Madam Warden, as chair of the committee, I move the adoption of this report. Second. Seconded by Councillor Green. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion is carried. Next, we will go to the Police Advisory Committee report. Over to you, Councillor Rhino. Thank you, Madam Warden. <clears throat> committee held its regular meeting February 14, 2023, via Zoom. Following the motion came forward as a result of that meeting. RCMP quarterly report. RCMP presented to quarterly report, including the HR update, commanding officers' priorities, community policing, East Hands operations update, calls for service data, and discussion on consultation for RCMP priorities. So from that, the Police and Advisory Committee recommends the Council authorize staff to move forward in securing the RCMP uh, lease renewal for the Mount Uniac Library Building. As Chair of the Committee, I do so move. Seconded, Seconded by Councillor Mitchell. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question. Question's been called. Still waiting for one more person. Oh, Councilor B has stepped out. So the motion is passed unanimously by those present. Madam Warden, that brings me to the end of my report. Chair of the Committee, I move the adoption of this report. 
Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion is carried. And that brings us to Park, Recreation, and Culture Committee report. Back to you again, Councillor Rhino. Thank you, Madam Warden. The committee held its regular meeting February 14, 2023, via Zoom. The following motions are coming forward as a result of this <coughs> meeting. Canadian Heritage River nomination. At the November 2022 Executive Committee, the Shibanakati Canal Commission presented an update on trans transitions, multi-year research and planning projects to increase awareness, access, and usage of the Shibanakati Canal waterway as a natural and cultural resource. During that presentation, it was requested that East Hands provide a letter of support to the Shibanakati Canal Commission. So from that, the Parks, Recreation, and Culture Committee recommend that Council support the Her Canadian Heritage River nomination and that East Hands provide a letter of support to the Shubenacadie Can Canal Commission. As Chair of the Committee, I do so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? The question's been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. Number two, not-for-profit insurance grant policy and related policies update. In January 2023, staff presented to council an, an outline of the potential standalone insurance grant program for not-for-profit not organizations in East Hans. Staff were directed to prepare a not-for-profit insurance grant policy and re <clears throat> remove insurance funding from existing municipal grant programs and update applicable policies. So from that, the Parks, Recreation and Culture Committee recommends that Council adopt the proposed not-for-profit insurance grant policy and approve updates to the community grant policy, the tourism grant policy, and the municipal grant program policy as described in the not-for-profit insurance grant policy report as attached to the executive committee agenda dated February 14, 2023. As chair of the committee, I do so move. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Green. Is there any discussion on the motion? The question's been called. We'll go to the vote. And the motion is passed unanimously. And more than that brings me to the end of this report. As chair of the committee, I move the adoption of it. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion has carried. That does take us to the Planning Advisory Committee report. Uh, before we move on, I would just ask Council if you are, would wish a five-minute break. I see... Okay, so we will reconvene at 8.28.
Advisory Committee report. Over to you, Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Warden. The committee held its regular meeting on February 14, 2023, online by Zoom. The no motion, there are no motions coming forward as a result of this meeting. Uh, PLN 20-005, Powell, Marchant, Redesignation and Rezoning, East Uniac, Final Report. It was dealt with at the public hearing. Uh, PLN 20-006, Raymar, Redesignation and Rezoning, East Uniac, Final Report. It was also dealt with at the public hearing. Plan Update, Community Engagement Report. Staff updated PAC on the findings of a judicial scan regarding agriculture AR zoning. Staff summarized the agriculture regulations for three Nova Scotia municipalities and included policies and regulations for each of the reviewed municipalities. As chair of the committee, I move the adoption of this report. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion is carried. Nominating committee report. I would ask the deputy warden to take the chair. Thank you, warden. Go ahead. Now I just have to find it. Uh, the nominating committee met earlier this evening as we uh, had to uh, fill a vacancy on the fire advisory report. In the fall of 2022, Mr. Mac Noble resigned as chair of the East Hans Fire Service Association. Mr. Noble represented the EHFSA on Council's Fire Advisory Committee. In November of 2022, Tyler Daphne was elected as the new chair of the East Hans Fire Service Association. The current terms of reference for the Fire Advisory Committee state that there will be one representative from the East Hans Fire Services Association. So I am going to move two motions. The first is that the nominating committee recommends that Tyler Daphne be uh, appointed uh, as the as the chair of EHFSA be appointed to the fire advisory committee. Second. Moved by the warden, seconded by Councillor Green. Is there any discussion? Sure. Question's been called. We'll go to the vote. <laughs> The votes are in, and it's passed unanimously. Back to you, Warden. The second motion is that the nominating committee recommends to Council that we update the terms of reference to identify that the chair of the EHFSA will be the representative to Fire Advisory Committee. I so move. Moved by the Warden, seconded by Councillor Mitchell. Is there any discussion? Question. Question's been called. We'll go to the vote. Votes are in, and it's passed unanimously. And finally, it has been determined by the nominating committee that one of our members of the audit committee has a conflict and recommends to council that the process be started to advertise for a new member of the audit committee. I so move. Moved by the warden, seconded by Councillor Musa. Is there any discussion? Question. Question's been called. We'll go to the vote. Votes are in, and it's passed unanimously. That concludes my report. I would move the adoption of this report. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Warden, back to you. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Next, we have second reading of bylaw F-400-8, an amendment to bylaw F-400, the tax exemption bylaws. I'm not sure who's taking that one. Uh, Councillor Rhino. Okay. This is the same one? Okay. The municipality of the district of East Hans enacted by bylaw F400, a bylaw that exempts nonprofit in and charitable, excuse me, organizations from paying property tax. Council gave first reading to the following changes on January 25th, 2023. 
and may proceed with second reading at this time. Parks, Recreation, and Culture Committee recommends that Council give second reading to bylaw F400-8, an amendment to bylaw F400, tax exemption bylaw, and be amended to reflect the following changes. Remove property number 01855654, Northfield Community Club. Add property number 00838918, Lions Memorial Park Society. Update property ownership for property number 04720601 from Upper Nine Mile River Community Hall Association to the East Hans Ground Search and Rescue. As chair of the committee, I do so move. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Question, Question has been called. And the motion has passed unanimously. If we could have the agenda on the. Give me the thing, it's not working. But... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next on the agenda is the warden's report. So I will turn the chair over to the deputy warden. Go ahead, warden. So up until today, it seemed that uh, February was, was a fairly quiet month. Um, and then today, I think I met myself coming and going twice, but anyway. On February the 8th, um, I attended a second meeting with the residents of Center Rodden around the Center Rodden Hall. Um, our staff were present and able to give some options and some ideas of uh, monetary consideration. And uh, the community uh, then took that information back to the community. And so this meeting was followed up last evening with a community meeting of those residents about the hall, which I did attend. And the uh, community was able to reach a consensus that uh, they just did not feel it was with, with disappointment, that it wasn't feasible to rebuild the hall in that location, but they would like to, um, they would like to establish a playground. And uh, so staff will be working to uh, to work through everything to make that happen, and I'm sure that uh, they'll be able to answer any questions the community has, and, and I certainly look forward to seeing something something positive come out of what was a, a you know a, a great loss to the community. I attended directors' meetings on the 13th and the 21st. I also attended the virtual code of conduct consultation meeting on February the 15th. Um, we had discussion on the, the proposed code of conduct and this particular consultation <laughs> was in how complaints were going to be handled and, and that sort of thing. Um, the majority of folks on the meeting that I attended were not in favor of creating a government bureaucracy costing $600,000 a year plus to administer this. Um, there was more broad support for the option which would see an RFP or something go out and uh, there be a law firm or law firms established from which individual councils could pick someone to investigate any code complaints. So there were assorted discussions on assorted things and how penalties would be if there were fines, how they would be collected. And uh, so I don't know if there will be opportunity for virtual meetings. There are still some in-person meetings taking place. And uh, I certainly still encourage any counselor who has time to take advantage of any meetings they might be able to attend because some of these um, proposals, particularly the 
recommendation around establishing the new body to do this would be uh, fairly costly to East Hants for something I, I don't feel, I feel we could get the same result for much less money than supporting that. So. I would also at this time just like to take this opportunity to remind Council that we are scheduled back here tomorrow evening for a workshop around the old Elmsdale and Lance school sites. That meeting is currently scheduled to begin at 6.30. I'd just like to ask if that works for everyone or if there is any desire to move that to 7 o'clock because I do know sometimes 6.30 meetings are problematic for councillors who work. Councillor Ryan. Well, for me, it would make it much easier at seven, but I'm only one person. Councillor Rhino, uh, for a show of hands, who would prefer seven o'clock? Would be easier for well, I'm easy, me. I'm good either way, so. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. so Warden, based upon the straw poll here, it looks like the majority would prefer seven o'clock. So, so is that, uh, I don't think we need a motion for that. That's acceptable to staff, but that will be at seven tomorrow evening in room 168. Thank you. So that uh, at this time uh, concludes my report. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Is there any questions for the Warden with regard to her report? Councilor Mitchell. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, there might be a weather event tomorrow evening, so Will the decision be made whether it continues the meeting or? I had had some thoughts about that, had not discussed it with the CAO. Um, the workshop format, uh, I don't know what the preference with the presentation of various possible diagrams and maps and that, if it would be preferable <coughs> to reschedule that if we have weather. Um, I'm just going to go. Uh to staff here right now, Warden. Go ahead, Adam. Yep, uh, thank you, Madam Warren. We have been uh, looking closely at the weather event for tomorrow. Uh, as of right now, it does look very minimal in the evening, so I think our our thoughts would be that it would uh, remain as is. Tomorrow may be a different uh, conversation, but if Council tonight wanted to make an alternative date, we've looked at Council's calendar and March the 23rd would also work as a, an alternative date. It's your... Um, uh, second night for committee on the Thursday night, uh, if you so choose to. Um, but as of now, we'd like to proceed tomorrow night, and we would notify, I guess, council tomorrow should uh, weather uh, change significantly from the current forecast. Thank you, Adam. Uh, is that answer everything for you, Councillor Mitchell? Yes, that's it. I just want to make people aware that it could be a weather event for staff who have to travel and, st and council. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. So uh, I'll just ask the question, um, is, there, is there a time um, that we should expect a call or a message that if it's a go or not a go based on the weather um, and reschedule to the other date? Yep, uh, thank you, <clears throat> uh, through you. The, we'll notify Council if there's any changes by uh, noon tomorrow. Um, in consultation with the, the warden, if that works, or would you prefer later th in the day? Let's let's say let's let's give it a little more leeway. Let let's say maybe by two o'clock, three o'clock, yeah. um, three o'clock. Is that is that amicable, council? Seems to be consensus, warden. And I, you know, I certainly am mindful of the distance I travel and my liking of, or not liking of driving in the winter. I'm certainly mindful that there are those who travel further than I do and that the weather patterns in the municipality, you know, there may be 10 inches of snow in one place and nothing somewhere else. So anyway, thank you. Seeing no further questions or comments, back to you, Warden. Thank you. We'll now go to business from councillors. Um, 
And we were going to go to Councillor Tingley, but I understand that where he's at right now is noisy and he doesn't feel that uh, it would be conducive to doing any business from councillors from his location. So we will go to Councillor Rhino. I have nothing at this time. Councillor Garden Cold. Thank you, Madam Warden. Uh, it's been fairly quiet in District 1 this month as well. I did have some positive feedback from several residents in White Estates uh, regarding the new three-way stops that have been installed. Uh, they feel that they are successful in reducing speed and are looking forward to further measures this coming year. I've also continued to get requests for a crosswalk in Central Enfield. Um, I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, we've made uh, multiple efforts to get that uh, secured. I'm hoping that uh, that will come uh, through way of a variance or that somehow we can get that done and um, that the hopefully the, uh, the minister will get back to us about, um, about maybe meeting and discussing that. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Warden. It's been reasonably quiet in District 2, but a few items I'd like to share. On uh, Thursday, February 16th, I attended a funeral for former commissioner of Bible Hill and the mayor of uh, Colchester County, Bob Taylor. He had some ties to East Hans when he did some coaching in years past. The library board meeting, which was scheduled for the 13th because of a death in the family of the CAO, was moved to the 27th of this month. Uh, you mentioned the workshops tomorrow. Uh, I wanted to send a thank you to staff for their hard work serving the public and also serving council. Especially to I know, I got some thank yous back for the road work, especially with the grading and the gravel <coughs> up through Belnan. The residents are very happy. The PIM on March the 7th, Tuesday, which is the Elm Salam buyer charge, I'll be away at the director's meeting in in Ontario, so I'm hoping that there's some good questions asked by councillors and is it possible for a copy of the presentation by email? I'm, I'm sorry, Madam Warden, I, I didn't catch uh, the last part. Uh, is it possible Mitchell's to do a consultation be, on? Uh, he's going to be away at the date of the public information session and wondered if you could email him a copy of the presentation. Oh, of course. Thank you. And also uh, checking the calendar for April. Uh, I planned a vacation for from April 2nd to the 16th. And I noticed that the public information on FH developments has been added. So I'll be away and I will not be uh, streaming or anything on that day, but I'd like to have that presentation also sometime. We can do that. And that's all. Thank you. Councillor Eisner. Thank you, Madam Ward. Uh, just working on some information on in-camera issues, so just getting information for myself. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Ward. Uh, a couple issues coming from the Northern Waste uh, region. Um, <clears throat> Nova Scotia environment, as we all know, has uh, put in some new C and D regulations and, and changes, and um, they want a feedback by December and the meeting will be held on March 8th and uh, they were presenting the regional chairs with with what their feedback is of that and and uh, as soon as staff have a copy uh, they will be shared it be posted here um, and we may have to dig further to understand our next steps in that change also the regional chairs uh, are elected officials uh, they meet monthly in, in, in Halifax and it's all in-person meetings so there's a lot of travel involved from one end of the province to the other and and um, because of the weather and the road conditions a lot of them can't meet it and um, it, it's, it's hard to get chairs to step up for to 
to uh, take on the role of chair because they know they may not be able to represent their, their region uh, as they'd like to do. So I would like to put forth a motion uh, to the regional chairs, move to have regional chairs meetings predominantly hosted as virtual meetings with a maximum of one in the person meeting a year that is still accessible for voting members to participate virtually and to move amend any and all regional chair committee governance documents to enable and accept virtual meeting voting by voting representatives. And this will be accepted practice efficiently immediately, regardless of when documents can be eventually be updated and adopted. I so moved. Second. Is this something that this council is able to do or would that have to go to, would that be a recommendation from this council? Yes, sorry, I didn't. I should have explained myself. Yes, yeah. we wouldn't be able to make that decision. But no, we would write a letter no. asking yes. for that to happen. Okay, yep. thank you. So it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Right. Questions been called. <coughs> and the motion is passed unanimously. Anything else, Councillor Heck? No, that's it, thank you. Councillor McPhee. Well, thank you, Warden. Yes, in uh, District 4, uh, specifically in Tribunacli and the Mill Village Road, we had quite a bit of flooding, and I'd like to report that the, we've had some flood relief thanks to the uh, efforts of Public Works, the Provincial Public Works Department. They took it upon themselves to uh, clear the problem out, even though it wasn't on there right away. So. Glad to see they uh, showed some good judgment and went ahead and uh, stopped the flooding, and that's going to be a great uh, relief to the uh, residents in the area that were being flooded out. So that's uh, a very positive thing. Hopefully that won't happen again because of that reason. Um, the park cleanup, I want to say that looks really good. Looks good down there with the... Uh, old burnt out shell gone. It was like the uh, community got a facelift when you're driving up around there now. Also the old practice ground, all knocked down, cleaned up. I was there, they were doing that. They did a nice neat job, looks really good. And I understand of course that there'll be some tidying up and dressing up uh, in the spring. Can't do that right now, but I think that's uh, making the whole park look a lot better. Uh, I attended the uh, code of conduct uh, consultation yesterday in Truro and uh, I was the alone uh, attendee so <laughs> it turned out there were supposed to be others but I was the only one so uh, it made it a very uh, very nice uh, presentation we went through it I was able to ask questions at any time and uh, get a full explanation so uh, some of the same things as I was told as uh, the warden brought up uh, uh, that I brought up the idea of creating another bureaucracy, 600,000, which is going to just increase every year for sure. Possibly we could look at uh, one law firm for the whole province, exactly the same thing. Um, we had the option, had the option of trying, of looking at doing it each municipality individually, but I think that might be a bit much to take on. But uh, maybe we get away from having a 600,000 plus new bureaucracy to support also. And when you look at the breakdown, how much it costs each municipality because of our population, and we can see in the growth of it, our proportion of supporting that office is going to go up. So uh, certainly financial considerations there for the uh, council. So um, another thing that uh, I uh, took a little exception to or was concerned about were some of the sanctions and the way they would be applied. Mm -hmm. Also, the fact that uh, they could uh, charge the councillor for the cost, or at least some of the cost, of the actual investigation. I pointed out this was like the old days in England when uh, Henry VIII would sentence you to be hanged. You were responsible for providing the rope. I don't think we should have to provide the rope if we're being investigated. So uh, that was one thought on that. Uh, also, another issue that was brought forward, and I realize it's not actually a municipal council issue, but it was a bus stop, so I had been speaking with the uh, 
head of uh, student transportation for uh, Colchester <coughs> East Hants. Uh, they're looking at some of these problems and uh, once I have uh, looked at it a little bit more, maybe uh, asking uh, council to address something in the form of a letter because the province is now reviewing some of the uh, conditions for creating a bus stop. So especially for rural areas. So uh, I think that could be something that council would be interested in when we get a little more information. So that's everything for District 4. Thank you. Thank you. And I commend you for getting that far with bus stops. That's further than I was able to get with the issues in my area. And I will certainly be supportive of them reviewing what they're doing now in the rural areas. Thank you. Deputy Warden Perry. Thank you, Madam Warden. Um, there's been a lot of activity in District 8. Uh, our fire department has been very busy. There's been uh, a few homes burnt out. There's been some quite significant uh, motor vehicle accidents uh, due to some of these flash snowstorms and freezing. And when you say the municipality gets different uh, levels of snow, I can attest. I, I had to come up this way one day, and when I left home, there was about 20 centimeters of snow. When I got here, there might have been two. So there's definitely a, a, a difference coming from the snow belt. But um, <clears throat> out of one of the tragedies, uh, one of the community members, they lost their home. And uh, there's going to be a fundraiser for PJ Hill and her family held on the 26th of February from 10 to 12. It's going to be a, a um, breakfast fundraiser to be hosted at Uniac Pizza. And anybody that's in the area wants to come have bacon and eggs and some toast and uh, hash browns, come on, come on by. $10 for adults, $5 for children. Proceeds are going to go to the family help them get them back on their feet. Um, we also could, would be remiss if we wouldn't mention, we're coming to the end of African Heritage Month. Um, it's, been a, it's been a busy month with a lot of issues and uh, there's been some really great programming and some great information that, that has been released this month by both provincial, federal governments and as well as a lot of other news agencies about significant events that might not have been known to the public and it's great to see these things are getting out there. Uh, RCMP, I want to thank the RCMP. Um, I've gotten plenty of calls in the past about the RCMP being not visible, and in the past month they've been very visible, and residents have noticed it. And uh, some are very happy to see them, others are not, and the ones that are not, I just ask them what they're doing, why they don't want to see them. Anyways, that uh, ends my report. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Warden. Um, just before I pass along, uh, it reminded me that I neglected to, in my report, let Council know that for the first time since uh, the pandemic, the Rodden District Volunteer Fire Department is attempting to have a modified small-scale version of their annual winter carnival. And uh, there will be a children's dance um, Thursday evening because it had to be canceled due to weather last weekend. Uh, those are for primary pre-primary to grade six children. Um, from six to eight, the ham and turkey roll with a bake sale and entertainment during admission will be at 7 p.m. on Friday. And on Saturday, there will be some snow sculpture judging, a, if there's any snow, a cakewalk from 12 to one, and a kids' carnival from one to three. Um, and then Saturday evening at 7, there's the Mike Winter Memorial Crib Tournament. And winding it all up on Sunday from 4 to 6 is a beautiful roast beef dinner at the Rodden Fire Hall. So uh, if you're looking for somewhere to go for supper on uh, Sunday evening, $12 for adults, 12 and under $6. So thank you for your indulgence, folks. I forgot that first time around. Councillor Green. Uh, not a lot to report this weekend. I will have the pleasure of presenting Chesley and Doris Singer with their 69th wedding anniversary certificate. It is. Chess is a Korean vet, and you're always good for some stories when you go visit them. So anyway, I just, in open council, wish them best wishes on their anniversary. <coughs> Councillor Musa. Uh, thank you, Madam Warden. Uh, the end of January and February were very bad months for Mount Uniac. We lost over 10 long-term residents. And 
I was sick for most of it, so I couldn't, I only could make it to two. And one of those residents was known by Miss Karen. She was the nurse, she ran the nursery school for the last 30, like for 30 years before they shut it down like a couple years ago. And I think every kid from 45 and under know her by Miss Karen, and she was a big loss for our community. Uh, and uh, I have a motion. I want to move a motion. I spoke about it last last week, and I move to have a letter written to the province advocating for a review of East Uniac Road to determine uh, both the current repair requirements based on increased traffic and weight loading, as well as the future requirements, such as widening requirements for the road to meet future demands and keep up with the most current safety standards for the road, for road design. Second that. Seconded by Councillor Green. Is there any discussion? Questions. Questions been called. And the motion is passed unanimously. Anything further, Councillor Musa? No, that's it. Thank you. So that concludes business from councillors. Um, I would now be looking for a motion to go in camera to discuss a land issue. Moved, Moved by Councillor Green, seconded by Councillor Mitchell. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion is carried. We will give staff a few minutes to move us in camera.
Are we good to go, folks? Okay, folks, I would report that we met in camera to discuss a land issue. There are no motions coming forward from that discussion. The only uh, piece of business left is to set the date and time of the next council meetings, March 21st, 2023, regular meeting of council for policy and in-camera, and March 29th, 2023, for the regular meeting of council. Could I have a motion? Move. Move by Councillor Hebb. Second. Second by Councillor Garden Cole. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion is carried. I'd be looking for a motion to adjourn. Move. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion or meeting is adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see.